Oh, my allergies are killing me. Everyone's allergies are killing everyone everywhere in the world today. Welcome back to another episode of our podcast. We educate cleared professionals about opportunities with cleared employers. That means you have more knowledge to make an informed career decision. Joining me as always is Ashley in the control booth and my dear friend, Rachel. How are you doing, Rachel? Living the dream. And I am so excited that we are just going to be dropping or sprinkling or spreading more knowledge to our cleared community. <laughs> hey, y'all. <laughs> our guest today is Ashley Flanagan. Excuse me, not Ashley. Ashley's in the control booth. Allison Flanagan, CEO of Omega Minds. Allison, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me today. No problem. We are super excited that you are spending a little time with us, and we like, always like to start the conversation with kind of a, a look back to where you've come from. So we would love to hear just a little bit about your career journey that landed you now today as the CEO of Omega Minds. Sure, sure. So, um, so I have a technical grad from Penn State, um, Information Sciences and Technology. Um, I went off to do... Fortune 100 consulting with IBM. So I had customers that were, you know, Goldman Sachs, State Street, um, Cigna, Nestle, American Airlines. And I really helped them to get out of kind of legacy architectures and homegrown capabilities into more of an ERP-like system, helped them to kind of consolidate their back office and gain efficiencies. And that was a lot of fun. Um, but I didn't find a true passion there. It didn't make me wake up to make sure that the chocolate was made and people got paid. Although it was a valiant effort, right, <laughs> and good things to do. Um, it wasn't until I made a pivot over to Booz Allen Hamilton where um, I had the opportunity to get very close to the national security and defense mission space. And that is what drove a passion in me. So being able to wake up every day and know that things that I was contributing to help to keep this nation safe and help to keep our neighbors and our friends and family safe. Um, that was something that made me wake up every day. Um, and I spent a decade and a half at Booz Allen, um, really helping them with one of their large programs over there. Um, I was ultimately managing a portfolio of folks, so 300 folks that reported to me across um, that MPO mission space, which was exciting. Um, from there, I made a pivot over to Microsoft. And I was leading their Azure engineering organization specifically focused on bringing secure cloud to Five Eye allies, which was a lot of fun. I woke up with the UK and I put Australia to bed. Um, and I learned a lot about kind of that broader mission space that I had fallen in love with, um, more from an allied nation perspective, right? So seeing kind of those mission threads pulled across from the US to UK to Australia and, and so forth. Uh, was a lot of... Um, of great exposure that I had an opportunity to kind of get um, involved in. Um, but it was around that time that uh, my husband, who's also my business partner, um, we started to see some success with the strategy that we had laid out with Omega Mines. Um, we went from having one um, subcontract to six. And so there was a critical decision point for us. Do we hire somebody on to execute this strategy that we felt passionate about? Or is it time for me to make the right move and come over and kind of drive that forward? And that's really what I did. So I've been here for over a year and it's my first time in a small business. And I can't tell you how refreshing it is to have uh, the ability to make such an impact on our team's um, careers, on their personal lives, from a benefits perspective. Um, that is something that is awesome. And to be back to the mission that I had fallen in love with um, you know, the earlier part of my career is awesome. That sounds absolutely wonderful. I just love hearing the passion and I love hearing that, you know, it's not only something that's here, but working with Five Eyes. I've, I've always, I haven't heard Five Eyes in a long time. So thanks for mentioning that. So can you share a little bit more for our listeners about Omega Minds focus as a company? And is there some special meaning to the name of the company? Sure. Yeah. So Omega Minds has historically focused on full stack software engineering. And there's a lot of different definitions around kind of what is full stack software engineering. For us, it means that we focus on front end, right? So having an understanding of user experience, user interface development, understanding the frameworks that are involved, like React, Angular and Vue, JavaScript and HTML and all those kinds of languages. 
all the way back to the back end, right? So um, doing back end development, whether it's with databases, leveraging Java, or deeper level kind of programming languages. Um, from there, we have branched out into data science, really folding in machine learning into a lot of the capabilities that we're building to enhance the user experience. Um, additionally, we have been kind of making a natural extension from our software heritage into more of these cyber um, defensive and offensive areas, really leveraging software engineering to help shore up um, the defense of our cyber uh, and, and critical infrastructures, right? So, um, so that's our focus. Our name has a meaning behind it. And we've spent a lot of time kind of thinking about this because it represents our culture as well. Um, the Omega part is, um, you know, important because Omega is the last letter of the Greek alphabet. And to us, that means that we focus on outcomes for our customers' critical missions. And the minds piece is focused on having a continuous growth mindset. So whether that's adding new tools to your toolkit, picking up new programming languages, tinkering with hardware like Raspberry Pis in your spare time, or even just gaining a new perspective from a different mission space so that you could better understand how you can solve tough challenges for your customer and bring more innovative thinking to those challenges. And so that's that's kind of us in a nutshell from a culture perspective and how we like to think about um, kind of that growth and focus on outcomes. Pretty amazing. I love a good title story. It's always, always exciting to hear and one that's well thought out and well executed. So kind of listening to some of the different areas where you're really looking at, for talent, we would love to hear just a little bit more about what are those clear jobs or kind of the skill sets that you're typically hiring for? That's a great question. So, um, so I mentioned we predominantly focus on kind of that full stack software engineering, but we've also been um, branching out into data science and some of that cyber offensive and defensive kind of area. So what that means is on our career site, um, we actually have 15 positions that are posted there. Um, behind those 15 positions, we have anywhere between four to 20 different openings across our contract portfolio that we have access to, which is really exciting. Um, so the positions on our website kind of give you a general um, set of skills that we're looking for. So for example, for somebody who's focused on front end development, we're looking for familiarity with any one of the um, front end development frameworks like React, Angular, or Vue. Um, sometimes customers have preferences, and so um, it will be one of those three that they kind of lean more heavily towards. Um, and then to complement that as a front end developer, you're looking at JavaScript, HTML, um, CSS, those kinds of languages to really round out your experience um, and ability to execute in kind of a UI UX position. Um, and then everything from kind of the back end side of things. So understanding different databases like MongoDB, um, SQL, NoSQL, you name it. Um, again, those kinds of um, tech stack decisions really come down to the program, um, the specific positions. And so we like to provide kind of, you know, a sampling of those skill sets that we're looking for. And then through our conversations with the candidate, we'll fit them into the best positions given their background and their career aspirations, um, and then the open positions at that time. We're also looking for folks who have that data science experience, right? So whether it's working with big data sets, understanding Hadoop and Accumulo and NiFi is really important, um, being able to do scripting in Python, leveraging Jupyter Notebooks um, and things of that nature um, are great skills to bring to the table for a data scientist, as well as understanding all of the data scientist kind of toolkits, if you will, whether it's uh, Panda or Pandas or um, you name it, right? Love uh, it. We're looking for reverse engineers who understand how to pick apart a different application or a capability and understand how it works. So they usually have a background in kind of software engineering, but then also understand how to kind of take apart that software code and really understand how the functions work together. Um, and then system engineers. Um, we work with customers who have kind of evolving requirements on a day-to-day -day basis and helping those um, customers um, capture both the business need, but also then translate in, it into a technical requirement is really important. And that kind of communication skill set, understanding how to speak 
both um, business function as well as technology is really important. That translation kind of capability for our systems engineers is really important. Love it. And so, you know, thinking about that, I'm sure you might possibly require some polyscope, you know, clearance there. Full scope. Tell me, what, what are you looking for? You know, the hard thing is um, lots of folks are kind of looking for some partial telework. Um, I will say uh, it's harder when you're working with the actual data or the mm -hmm. capability that you are working um, requires you to access um, secure systems and facilities, mm -hmm. right? Um, in order to do your job, if you have to be in spaces or accessing data that is sensitive, then yes, you're right, we need full scopes. And the majority of our positions require full scopes. And that's that's um, just a byproduct of mm -hmm. the nature of the mission that we support, um, the data that they have access to, um, as well as, you know, sometimes it's challenging with customers working together on CI polys and mm -hmm. how well they transfer from down south to up north. Um, there's mm -hmm. not a lot of great reciprocity there. And so most customers just tend to um, lean on full scope polys because of that risk aversion. Got it. And are a lot I, of I, these. I love, was, oh, go ahead, Paul. Go ahead. I was go just going to say, Kathleen. I love. I was just going to say, I love that description, up south, <laughs> up north and down south. Yes, that's, there's not a lot of reciprocity. Go ahead, Rachel. Absolutely. And as we talk about north and south, I heard a rumor that a lot of your positions might be located in the north, in Maryland, in fact. So do you have a lot of contracts that are placing folks inside, outside of Maryland? Tell us a little about where these positions are located. Sure. So, yes. Yeah, so the majority of our positions are located here in Maryland. Um, we do have a couple of contracts that will take advantage of the full kind of cryptologic centers, which are located in Denver, um, out in even Alaska, Hawaii, Texas, um, in those kinds of locations. There are some that are also abroad. I will tell you, because we're a small business, we're predominantly focused on you know, creating that culture and cultivating that culture here in Maryland, it's a lot easier to have happy hours and our fun times activities, which we really enjoy doing when we're, we're in person. <laughs> um, and um, for us, we don't want to place somebody in, say we put them in Texas and for them to feel like they're really on an island and they don't have access to the broader kind of community here at Omega Mines. So while we do have some contracts that allow us to place folks across kind of Oconus and Conus locations, um, we focused really on kind of the Maryland location. Um, however, we are in kind of the next couple of months up to a year, um, we will be looking at opportunities down south. Um, so we're starting to kind of make an investment in that direction, um, trying to line up different partnerships to help us with expanding down there. Um, we would continue to kind of execute in our core functional areas, that full stack software engineering, data science um, kind of realm. Love it. And since you're here, kind of want to pick your brain for just a moment, if you don't mind us going into your Omega mind, if you will, but would love to hear some of your thoughts on just some of the remote opportunities in that highly classified space. That's a really great question. And I will tell you, it's kind of, it has ebbed and flowed. I will say that COVID really set the bar for folks getting comfortable where they could in mission spaces that could allow for telework. Um, but we have kind of seen that come back, right? Just like you're seeing with commercial um, entities calling all of their folks back and hoping that they come into spaces. Um, similarly, given the mission that we support, um, most of the telework opportunities are few and far in between. Um, they are mostly in the area that we are supporting, so kind of that software engineering, system engineering kind of realm. Um, but at the same point in time, it's usually about um, 20 to 30 percent max on that telework, right? And so um, folks can expect, you know, one to two days of telework um, if the position and the mission can accommodate that. Um, but that's kind of the trend. And then I will say that it's a really competitive market out there for those telework positions because everyone has the opportunity to kind of experience some level of telework, right? And everyone's like, ooh, I have things that I want to kind of juggle while I also do my core, you know, um, work responsibilities. Um, and so, you know, a couple of things for candidates to consider is 
it's highly competitive. You've got to turn around a response, right? Whether you're signing a contingent offer or um, you're a current employee to hop on that position. And then that position is looking at the most cost-effective resource too. So um, I often have candidates who I uh, will say, hey, if you can get me a telework position, I'll take this lower salary. But if you if you want me to come in and work um, on site, I'll take this higher salary. Right. So they'll kind of give a range. And I think that's a really interesting approach because it does um, allow those candidates to be more competitive in the market. Yeah, it is. I totally hear you. And I'm I'm excited that so many employers have really been able to recraft their employee engagement and recruiting strategies based on remote positions. And it has also meant that they had to go back to their customers and say, okay, what can we do? How can we take care of the data? How can we do this? So it has been a very interesting journey on the podcast to really talk to different employers as to how they're handling this. But you brought up an earlier point about it's really hard to have a happy hour when most of the folks <laughs> Are, are in Maryland and someone's down in Texas. So what are some of the elements of play and fun that you have there at Omega Minds? Oh, that's, that is a great part of our culture. So we like to work hard, right? We're very focused on outcomes, but at the same point in time, you have to really enjoy life and the people that you work with. So it is important to have fun as well. We do monthly activities, um, kind of get togethers, and they're either the first Monday or Wednesday of the month. So people can kind of plan their calendars around when we're getting together. Um, and then we do things from Baltimore all the way down to DC. So we've done things like mixology courses with alcoholic and non-alcoholic beverages and food pairings, right? And everybody kind of learns how to mix different kind of, you know, ingredients. And then how does that go with a meal? Um, we have done, um, you know, Autobahn car racing. We have done games nights, which are my favorite. Um, I really enjoy getting everyone together and doing kind of you know, these game board nights where people can bring their own games that they really love. And it, it tends to bring people out of kind of their, you know, every day and they get really comfortable kind of just being a person and getting to know other people around the table and sharing great food and great beverages. And um, that's probably my favorite event because I usually leave my face hurts, stomach hurts from laughing so hard. Um, and it's a really great way for everyone to just connect at a different level. It's so much awesome. fun. So you pull me out Monopoly, right? <laughs> then you pull out Monopoly and all bets are off. Who's going to be the dog? Who's going to be the shoe? It just gets crazy out there. And but who's getting boardwalk? <laughs> right. <laughs> it, it is at least gets real heavy over here in, in my neck of the woods. But talking about competition, you know, whether it be a game night or trying to be in the competition for talent, kind of as a smaller contractor, how are you out there competing for this poly talent? What are some of the strategies that you're employing to get them there? Is it the Audubon racing? <laughs> Probably the Audubon as our top Helps. list. Now, um, <laughs> for us, I think it's really important because um, we're currently in a candidate's market, right? And so you really have to focus on how do you optimize um, your package for those candidates? And so for us, um, we're optimizing things around the candidate's specific interests and highlighting those to them that kind of you know, speak to some of their motivations. And so whether that's, hey, we've got this culture that's focused on impact and continuous growth, um, or it's our benefits and total compensation, um, or it's, hey, we're a small business and we're very agile and we are also driving innovative things because we don't come with all this prior investment sunk cost where we can't, you know, take a, a chance on something new. And so, you know, in one of those facets, it's going to speak to our candidate, right? Um, we just have to identify and really listen for what they're interested in and where is their current employer not hitting the mark or where are they looking to make a change that's motivating them and finding something in our benefits package that really speaks to that. And I think it starts with listening and then it goes towards aligning to the right things that motivates that individual. So in our earlier conversation, you were talking a lot about the interviewing process and you had some very interesting things to say about your interviewing process. So let's start with your hiring process. How does someone get in the front door at a Mango Binds? 
That's, that's a great question. So um, I will say that Omega Minds, um, I kind of talked about this earlier, um, but we really focus on matchmaking. Um, and that probably sounds funny in like the career, career world, but um, for us, it's all about listening to where the candidates coming from, what are their skills, how do we best align the opportunities that we have to those career aspirations? And then from there, kind of um, moving forward into kind of our technical alignment. I typically act as the front door. I'm matching somebody based on, does our culture fit with the way that they like to operate um, and things of that nature, right? Um, and then if they're a great fit and they feel like they're a great fit, we move them into our tech fit process, right? And the tech fit has kind of three objectives. The first thing is, tell me more about that technical background and where do you want to take yourself, right, in this next chapter? And the next piece is, um, how do we align that to actual positions that we have open? So our technical fit team, um, they actually look at current openings that we have, and they've gone through kind of a pre-filtering based on the candidate's resume, and then they'll continue to filter that based on the conversation with the candidate in real time and share at least three to five openings that we have access to um, that align with that individual's aspirations, right? Um, and then from there, if it's a great fit, we provide them with a verbal contingent offer and move forward. Um, it's a very streamlined process. So we have kind of those two touch points and it's really so that the candidate can get to know our leadership team as well as we get to know the candidate. Um, and then we do that matchmaking, which I think helps that candidate really find the right fit for where they're trying to go in the next chapter of their career. And that's so important because I don't, I think a lot of people, no matter how many times I've done career coaching over the last 20 years or so in this industry, everyone doesn't, most job seekers I find don't look at the next step. They just look at the next step up in their salary or the next step up in their title rather than what is the next step? What do they want to accomplish? What do they want to learn? And I must say that so many times and people still ignore me and go on and do what the others, what they want to do. But I'm so happy to hear that you do that matchmaking. So I understand you have some go-to interview questions that you have for cleared candidates. Do you want to share those with us? Of course. Yeah. So we like to, I like to talk about three things, right? As, as I'm kind of acting as that front door, I'm really looking for a cultural fit, um, as well as kind of how that individual handles it. So the first question is, What's something that you learned in this past year that really made you excited, right? And that helps me to understand how that person thinks about continuous growth, right? And then what are they thinking about for the next part of their um, career, right? Um, and I really like to kind of hear what makes people passionate because that also helps us with our matchmaking process. Um, and then from there, I like to learn what they do in their spare time um, for us. Like I said, we like to play hard as well as work hard. And so understanding what kind of makes them passionate outside of work helps me to know kind of where I can align some of the things that we offer at Omega Minds or perhaps what is motivating that individual to look for, say, partial telework opportunities, right? Um, and then the last piece is um, I typically ask how they handle conflict because for us, um, you know, we work in a dynamic environment. There's not a lot of conflict, but I think Having a good head on your shoulders and understanding how to navigate um, tricky scenarios is a really great thing, and it pays forward into so many other scenarios. So part of matchmaking really is kind of understanding exactly what you just mentioned, understanding their needs, their motivations, their whys, and looking for that job. So I heard from a little birdie that you do something that might be a first for me, and I'm really excited to dig into a little bit more. You kind of serve as the maitre d', if you will, and offer kind of a menu of jobs. Kind of walk us through how that looks, and are candidates surprised by this offering? I don't know why this is a menu, but this feels like a menu in my head. Um, but, you know, are they the menu of jobs that we have here? Welcome. Um, but are they kind of surprised by that approach, or how does that how does that work? I'm, I'm so excited to learn more. Oh, yeah. So we actually just went through this experience with one of our, um, our contingent hires. Um, so, you know, this candidate walked through the process. They initially, you know, expressed a lot of interest in UI UX. And so we went and in our technical fit, uh, presented them with three to five different openings. 
and they wanted to talk to all of the openings. They actually ended up interviewing with six different um, program teams, and then they narrowed it down to their top priority, and the top priority also was interested in them starting. So it was a wonderful match for us, right? Um, this candidate had um, all but one program come back and say, hands down, we want them to come and join our team, right? Um, and so that was really exciting. And I think it also demonstrates that, you know, for us at Omega Minds, our strategy is centered around having career mobility for our folks um, because that ties to that growth mindset, gaining new perspectives, picking up new tools, um, et cetera. If you can't navigate Omega Minds and not have a career here, then we're not doing the right things, right? So for us, having kind of multiple contracts with all of the same kinds of positions, maybe different technical stacks, different um, tools that they're using, et cetera, gives you that opportunity to have career mobility and continuous growth, right? Amazing. Absolutely amazing. I love it. I just want to carry the banner of Omega Minds everywhere. So any other job search tips you can share with our listeners that, you know, from your side of the desk, what do you think that people are missing out on or what they need to do better? So, you know, it is a candidate's world, um, but at the same point in time, I think that it is still important to have kind of that, that uh, etiquette of being a candidate, right? Uh, close, when you're closing that door, leave that window open, right? So make sure you circle with the, um, the uh, potential employer and thank them for their time um, and say, hey, if something comes up, I'd love to reconnect with you, right? That just keeps that window open. And I think that's really important. Um, sometimes candidates will just kind of um, ghost you. <laughs> you might talk to them once and then you just don't hear from them. And, you know, it might have been a good cultural fit or maybe it wasn't, but it's good to give that feedback loop, right? Um, that's one thing. And then on the other side, you know, it might be that you're a great cultural fit, but we can't find the right position that aligns with the timeline and the specific skills that you want to grow in, right? And if that's the case, you should still leave that window open. And so I think it's really important to kind of leverage that etiquette lesson of, you know, circling with whoever you interviewed with, thanking them for, for their time and leaving that window open. Awesome. Great advice. And I know you've, you've really dug out some great advice here and given people a lot to think about here. So they're probably just maybe want to get a hold of you. So how can they reach you and Omega Mods? Good question. So there are two ways that you can connect with us. Um, we do have our Omega Minds um, website um, that has kind of our 15 positions on our careers page, right? Um, and again, those are kind of the general positions that give you a good understanding of the types of skills and technologies that you'd be working with. Um, but those positions represent anywhere between four to 20 other positions sitting behind those across our portfolio of contracts, right? And so you can apply to one of those positions and that starts the full two-stage process for us, right? Um, the other way is you can just email us directly with your resume um, at hello at omegaminds.com. And that's also on our website. Um, and you can just connect us with, with us there and that will start the process. Oh, that's just amazing. I love that. So I have one other question that uh, we just sort of ask because I like gathering information for my colleagues who are recruiters. And this is the question that everybody gets. What is your most difficult recruiting challenge and what tools or skills do you use to overcome this? Uh, yes. Yeah, so I will say again, it is a candidate's market. So um, there's a lot of competition. Uh, I think the thing that helps us in kind of the tool skills area is um, we're very candid with our candidates. We like to get to know them. Um, we like to do that matchmaking. I think that that sets us apart from other um, potential employers, uh, because we're not just here to get you into one specific requirement on one contract. We're here to try to help you navigate a potential career at Omega Mines, right? We wanna see you grow here. We wanna invest in your skills um, and see you kind of advance and diversify and all of those great things. Um, I will say the most difficult thing is really, um, is really making sure that we are measured in our growth. 
So there are a lot of candidates out there um, and not all of them are a great fit from a cultural perspective as well as a technical background perspective. And so we do have um, to apply really great discipline and rigor in who's going to be kind of that representative um, face, that representative set of outcomes that we're driving for customers on behalf of Omega Minds. And so, you know, I think that's one aspect of measured growth. And then the other side is, you know, if you're growing too fast, you're not really um, continuously cultivating the culture that you've spent so long really creating. And so um, for us, you lose a level of intimacy if you grow too fast. Um, we have created, um, you know, positions internally to help us with having that high touch that a small business gets to have, right? Um, and that's one way. Um, but the other way is really being thoughtful about who represents Omega Minds and how many folks we bring on, on board and are they really a great fit from a technical and cultural perspective? And I think that's the biggest challenge for us is really doing that matchmaking activity to make sure that we're picking the best and the brightest for the Omega Minds team. That mute button is always a really tricky one when you talk about the brightest and the best. They can find the mute button. That should be part of the interview process with the menu of jobs I think there. You have to be humbled by that mute button. Once oh, again. my goodness. I'm telling you, keep you humble. Find the mute button. But this has been a fantastic conversation. I'm glad we could commiserate over the mute button together. But this has been just wonderful getting an opportunity to learn a little bit more about Omega Mind. Really, it's challenged me in a lot of ways to think about how I do my day in day out so really just appreciate the conversation and thanks so much for being with here with us here today <laughs> thanks Allison we really appreciate it yeah likewise Kathleen and Rachel it's been such a pleasure to get to know you a little bit more and share a little bit more about Omega Minds thanks for the time you're welcome <laughs>